Hi, this is Simon Upstill and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be combining a little bit of maths and a little bit of motion to create this Fibonacci sunflower effect. So quite pretty, quite interesting. Let's make a start on it. OK, so first let's check on, on our project setup, 1920 1080. I'm going with a frame rate of 100 frames a second, and this is important to get this accurate. And I'm going with a duration of 10 seconds. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to select the circle tool, hold down the shift key and draw out a small circle, center it up, come over to shape, geometry, and set that radius to 30. Then what we're going to do is come to object and make particles. So the first thing I'm going to do is set that emission range to zero. I'm going to set that birth rate to 10. That's an important number. Let's set that life to say 15 and the speed I want to set to 150. And now if we look along the timeline, you can see that we've got this growing line. So just to visualize this effect a little bit better, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to add a particles scale over life. And so you can see the particles get larger the older they are. So let's set up this scale at birth to be 10 and the scale at death to be 270. So then the trick to getting this to work is that we're going to apply a rotation to the emitter in order to get our sort of Fibonacci golden ratio spiral. And there is a magic number for doing this, and that's the key to it. And I'm going to apply it by adding to the rotation a rate behavior. And the value I'm going to go for is 61.8. And immediately you can see that we've now got that classic Fibonacci golden ratio spiral which kind of grows from the center like that. So this magic number of 61.8 is basically derived from phi, which is this number here that I've given you on screen. It's one of those numbers a bit like pi that has a sort of an endless series of decimals after it, but we can approximate it enough. And 61.8 in this case is going to be good enough for our purposes. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that emitter and we're going to make a clone of it. So right click make clone layer, turn off the original emitter and then from that clone we're going to come to object and replicate. And for the shape we're going to choose line and we're going to zero out these two x values. And for the points we're going to go with the Fibonacci number of 34 and then we need to come down to the angle end and the value here is basically 360 minus 360 divided by 34. That makes any sense. So the actual number for that is negative 349.411. And now you can see that we've got our sunflower effect. And so all these numbers are pretty critical to getting it right. You can't sort of busk them. Although there are numbers that are close that work, you can see that 34 is in fact the magic number for that. Similarly, the birth rate here is very much key. You can see that if I don't get that birth rate right, the whole thing starts to fall apart. So 10 for the birth rate is absolutely key. The speed is less important. It just simply determines how fast this grows. So if you want to just kind of slow that down, you would do one, two, five or whatever. So it's, it's, that's not a critical number. And if you've got all these values right, you can tell because it looks as though these spirals go both ways. And it's a quite really interesting effect, kind of does your eyes in a bit, but uh, spirals going both ways and you've got a perfect sunflower arrangement. So as you can see, our sort of seed pods, as it were, are all packed optimally. And that's, that's how a sunflower does it. It wants to get its uh, seeds as close together as possible. And uh, it uses Fibonacci. It's kind of worked out that that's the right way of doing it. So very clever sunflowers. And obviously there's lots of other plants that do similar things. And obviously, you know, with the the basic spiral arm, there's things like ferns and all sorts that, that actually use this. So it's like it's everywhere in nature. 
So let's switch back to our replicator. And at this point, we're pretty much done with the whole animation side of it. What I need to do in order for it not to kind of rotate like this is to copy this rate behavior onto the replicator. So let's do that. So let, hold down the Option key and drag it onto the replicator. And now you'll see that the this is much more like a kind of normal growth. It grows out from the middle hypnotically like that. So I'm actually going to set my play range to end at three seconds like that, because beyond this point, it's it's not quite right. I've set up my values for that to work like this. So there you go. And I'm going to come to sort of here so you can see what the, I'm now going to do. I'm going to come back to my circle. Now it's just a question of making it look pretty. We're going to come to the fill and we're going to choose gradient. We're going to open up the gradient. We're going to choose radial. We're going to let's just remove one of those color tabs so we can do this more easily. Uh, essentially, we want to make this thing sort of pretty red like this, not overly saturated, uh, not overly bright, probably actually quite dark. Let's go for that, for that color. Let's hold down the Option key and drag this tab all the way to the other end. Let's increase the brightness to something like that, maybe a little bit less saturation. Uh, and let's set the start to zero and the end to something like negative 40. So I want to bit this to be a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to make a new group just above that. Click new group. I'm going to pop that into there. I'm going to turn the circle back on again and I'm going to use this group as the particle cell like that. You're not noticing anything different just yet, but what we're going to do is going to come to the library generators and caustics and we're going to drop that in there and we need to right click Add image mask and you need to use the circle as the image mask source and we need to turn the circle back on again. And then what we're going to do is come to the inspector uh, for the caustics and let's just set this blend mode to color dodge. It's going to zoom in so you can see the effect of this. So it's getting this nice little sort of bright highlight, animated bright highlight. And I might just also just affect the color of this. So again, we're just making it not white something like this and possibly bump up the brightness to sort of 40 something like that and just to kind of take the edge off that a little bit i'm going to come to filters blur gaussian blur and let's just bump that up just a little bit like that just to take the the crispness out of that and i'll take this group and i'll put apply filters color levels and just play with this till we get the look that i want so punch up the whites like that and maybe just reduce the blacks as well like that so we're getting we're getting a lot more contrast into there and so then all that remains is to add a background so i'm going to come to generators and color solid drop that into a new group at the back there come to the inspector i'm going to make this a very dark desaturated red then i'm going to come to library and i'm going to grab cellular drop that in there Come to the inspector and I'm going to set the blend mode of this to color dodge. And I'm just going to open up this gradient and I'm going to make this color a little bit saturated as well like that. So then to this group, I'm going to add filters blur and Gaussian blur. I've set the amount up to 64 and reduce that mix value down to say 30. Just gives us a little bit of a kind of glow on there. I'm also going to add to this group stylize and vignette right down there let's have zero for the saturation and for the blur amount let's do a bit more darkening let's increase the size which rather bizarrely reduces the size down to somewhere like that and increase the fall off just to soften that and i think probably what we also want to do here is add some noise so stylize add noise let's switch to blue noise Let's just change that blend mode to overlay and then to this group here, just actually let's put it above the cellular. I'm going to come to library and I'm going to look for generators and lens flare. Bring that in here. So let's just animate this. Let's come to three seconds on the timeline. Let's set a keyframe for the intensity and the size. Uh, size is going to be 250. Intensity is going to be four. Let's come back to the start 
and set both of those down to zero, just so we get this sort of brightening up effect. What's particularly nasty is this color. So we want to select the main color here and just add enough saturation till it all sort of starts to blend in a bit better like that. And I'm also going to copy that lens flare, Command C. I'm going to come up to this top group here, paste it in there, make sure it's at the top. And I'll set this blend mode to color dodge and maybe even just brighten it up, brighten up this color so it's a little bit less saturated. We've got more of a kind of bright hot spot in the middle like that. So that's pretty much it, I think. Oh, I know what the other thing I want to do is I want to come down here back into this group here and I want to add generators and caustics. Bring that in, doesn't really matter too much what the order is. I'm going to set that blend mode to color dodge. And I'm also going to add filters and tiling and oops and random tile. I'm going to set that value up to something like 350. I'm also going to come into the color for the caustics and just bring down the brightness down to around sort of 70, 75%. Again, let's add in a little bit of sort of color to it like this. And then let's come to properties at three seconds where we're currently parked. Let's hit a keyframe. Let's come to the beginning and set that down to zero, just so we get this extra sort of brightening up as the whole thing grows. The only thing I might do is also just revisit that levels control on the, uh, the particle cell and maybe just brighten it up even more, maybe a bit less of that sort of black crunch so we get a, a kind of brighter effect like that. Anyway, so what you might want to do is render it out, bring it into a new project, and it maybe even just kind of reduce the frame rate because obviously you've got you've got 60 frames to play with. You could actually halve that and still have a nice smooth uh, playback and, uh, you know, add a hold or whatever at the end. But anyway, that's your Fibonacci sunflower. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again on the next one.